Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India says era is not for war as G20 finance meet starts in Bengaluru city. 9-11 victims cannot seize Afghan central bank assets, says US judge. And power price hikes push Sri Lankan bakery owners to the edge. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday said it was time for dialogue and diplomacy, reiterating its stance on the war in Ukraine as finance officials from the G20 countries met near the southern city of Bengaluru. India's Information Minister Anurag Thakur on Wednesday reiterated the country's stance on the war in Ukraine that today's era is not for war, but for dialogue and diplomacy. Days ahead of the February 24 anniversary of Russia's invasion, and as G20 finance officials started a meeting near Bengaluru city, Anurag Thakur made the remarks after welcoming delegates to the February 22 to 25 meeting, which is the first major event of India's G20 presidency. India's presidency of the bloc comes at a time when neighboring Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Pakistan have sought bailouts from the IMF due to an economic slowdown caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine war. Today's era is not of war. Democracy, diplomacy and dialogue is the way forward. India has kept a neutral stance on the war, declining to blame Russia for the invasion, seeking a diplomatic solution and increasing its purchases of Russian oil over the past year. Moving on. Israeli ambassador to India, Nayar Gillen, said on Wednesday that Israel is happy with India's Adani group undertaking the construction of Haifa port in his country. Gillen said it is a very symbolic sign of strategic trust and depositing your strategic assets in hands of Indian companies on the heels of completion of 30 years of diplomatic ties. The Adani group and its partner logistics group Gadot purchased the port for $1.15 billion. The entrance of Adani has spurred Israel's leaders to revive hopes of creating a trade gateway connecting the Mediterranean port of Haifa and the broader Middle East, which do not have ties with the Israel. We are giving it to uh, an Indian company. I think from our point of view, it's a very symbolic uh, or you know, you know, a, a sign of tr deep trust in, in depositing your, your strategic assets in uh, 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 in hands of Indian companies. I think that uh, it has the potential, to, uh, especially at Adani Group, who are the bread and butter, the basic work was ports where they started. So they have the potential there from, uh, for them to make the Haifa port the port it needs to be and to utilize it to bring, uh, to increase trade in the region, the trade between India and Israel. I think the potential there is, uh, is huge also to help the trade between our countries and everything. And, uh, well, we are very happy. People in Pakistan's Lahore city recently expressed their anger over skyrocketing prices of vegetables, especially tomatoes and onions, which has annoyed them at large. They said that 170 billion rupees in new taxes will further burden the poor while the rich continue to evade taxes. Locals in Lahore city of Pakistan recently expressed their concern over skyrocketing prices of vegetables, especially onions and tomato, which has annoyed them at large. They expressed a poor man who earns 500 rupees cannot afford vegetables even for a day and even lentils are out of their reach now. A resident said 170 billion rupees in new taxes will further weaken the poor while the rich continue to benefit from tax subsidies.
तो सब्जी आप लगा लें एक दिन की जो सब्जी है ना मेरा ख्याल पाँच सौ छः सौ रुपये में मीन वाइल फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर इशकदार सेड ऑन वेंसडे दैट पाकिस्तान विल दिस वीक रिसीव अ न्यू सेवन हंड्रेड मिलियन यू एस डॉलर लोन फ्रॉम चाइना टू हेल्प शोर अप इट्स फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व द क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी एक्सटेंडेड टू द स्टेट ओन चाइना डेवलपमेंट बैंक comes as pakistan is thrashing out a deal with the imf to unlock funds from a 6.5 billion dollars bailout crucial to staving off economic collapse a key border crossing between pakistan and afghanistan remained closed for a fourth day on wednesday with thousands of trucks stuck at the crossing according to pakistan afghanistan joint chamber of commerce and industry around 6000 trucks loaded with goods had been stuck on both sides since sunday They have raised concern as the closure of the border crossing was causing losses to traders in both the countries. The Taliban administration had closed Torkaham, the main point of transit between Pakistan and landlocked Afghanistan, citing Pakistan's failure in its commitments to allow transit and travelers and sick people seeking treatment to cross. Residents had also reported heavy gunfire on Monday morning near the Torkaham border crossing. However, Taliban officials have denied any clashes and said the situation was under control. Khawar na mera barkar de jala baat tazam. Shna bendai da shin marcha ke de tenda da baad rang di tomato di inda ubudi bas terwaan di da nuksanu na di chhu shuda tsumra rabun rupu mal na di mal wala tawan de. Usse ke pumang wapas kim karaya nashta ya usse am nashta da nuksan da tel aur da kharche dil ta da palar tsumra kharche usse dhamal bhi asuk ra kai tsukim na ra kai. A US judge in Manhattan, George Daniels, on Tuesday decided that victims of the 9/11 attacks are not entitled to seize 3.5 billion dollars of assets belonging to Afghanistan's central bank to satisfy court judgments they obtained against the Taliban. Daniels said he was constitutionally restrained and letting 9/11 victims seize Afghan central bank assets would amount to a ruling that the Taliban are Afghanistan's legitimate government. He further added that the Taliban not the Afghan people must pay for the Taliban's liability in the 9/11 attacks. The US Treasury Department last year said about 3.5 billion US dollars in Afghan central bank assets will be transferred to a new Swiss based trust fund that will be shielded from the Taliban. It said that the funds will be used to help stabilize Afghanistan's collapsed economy. The new electricity tariffs announced last week have made life difficult in Sri Lanka which is already struggling with the worst economic crisis in decades. Business owners in the island nation say they are running business on legacy and tradition instead of profits. A report. The new 66% electricity tariff hike announced last week has made running businesses in crisis in Sri Lanka difficult. Owners of Wish Bakers, which has been feeding Colombo residents with bread, buns, and other baked goods for last 25 years, see legacy and tradition are keeping the business running rather than profit nowadays. The bakery, which has 15 outlets and 60 employees, had already doubled the prices of their products at the height of the country's economic crisis in the middle of last year. Sri Lanka's 5,000 odd bakeries, which employ about 200,000 people, have been badly hit. Many find it difficult to repay loans after the central bank was forced to increase interest rates to record highs last year. Aurdu pahagada passe gila bello otte ma denta pe sale leke samaning siya da panha ke idhar adu ila thi na. Save ka pramanit, badagan pramane siya da panha ke idhar adu ila thi na. Eka ta heka he tu akta ma denti na badu milatte ke karan bilatte ke diya dang okkama badu ila thi na. Apita nishpaade ne apita karan na pulang unat. गान आप पारी भोग अडवेला एक मिनसुनाते साली आप बल कुटे जनता मेहमे जीवते बेहतरमाटे मिनस तुंगे बहुम अमार भी बड़ी बड़ी मेरटे मिनस जीवते बेरी तत्व The government had already increased electricity prices by 75% last year. It hopes the fresh move will persuade the International Monetary Fund to provide a bailout. But in the meantime, it adds to the pain of Sri Lankans already grappling with inflation above 54% year on year in January and income taxes as high as 36%. A startup company in India's Indore city is turning heads with its quirky pop-up which asks employees to go home warning them of a system shutdown once their office hours are up. Take a look. 
An Indian startup in central Indore city is battling the culture of overwork and long hours by locking its computers and sending employees home with a pop-up message, please go home. The message tells workers of soft grid computers, warning them the system will shut down once their office hours are up. A company official said the employees were shocked at first, as most of them were used to working at companies where they needed permission to clock off. Long stretching hours office ke jo hai. वो हम रिड्यूस करने की कोशिश करते हैं हमेशा तो उसके लिए हमने एक सॉफ्टवेयर बिल्ड किया जो कि एक नोटिफिकेशन सिस्टम है जैसे ही सिस्टम टर्न ऑन होता है वहाँ से हमारा टाइम ट्रैकिंग स्टार्ट होता है एंड टाइम जैसे ही शिफ्ट टाइम ओवर हो जाता है देन एक पॉपअप आ जाता है विच रिमाइंड दैन कि आपका शिफ्ट टाइम ओवर हो गया एंड यू कैन नाउ गो होम सो इस तरह का हमने एक टूल बिल्ड किया है सो एंड इसे एंड जो बेसिक मोटो है दैट इज़ वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस कि वो अपने फैमिली को टाइम दे सकें सोशली थोड़ा टाइम स्पेंड कर सकें द इम्प्लॉयज हु नंबर अबाउट फोर्टी से दे आर स्लीपिंग बेटर एंड आर मोर मोटिवेटेड बींग अ गर्ल मेरे लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कि मैं टाइमली घर पहुँचूँ घर के और भी बहुत सारे काम होते हैं तो उन सब को पूरा करने के लिए और वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस के लिए मेरे लिए पापा बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाता है वर्किंग लॉन्ग आर स्किल्स हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल अ ईयर द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सेड इन ट्वेंटी a trend that worsened during the health crisis of covid-19 pandemic well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India